Cardi B is exposing the Illuminati. She wants to get out of it. Listen to this. Not why I didn't want to do this song, Shake It, or like any drill song, because these songs are activating like these demons. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be that girl anymore. Like, I just, I just want to be a mother. So I think a lot of the times when these musicians say they sell their soul to the devil for, um, you know, fame and stuff, uh, I don't think they're actually talking about selling their soul to the devil. I think it's just a metaphor for, like, you know, giving up their freedoms. I think a lot of cases these are taken out of context, um, but probably not all the time based on a lot of shit we see in these videos. Let me know what you think. They have just found an alien in South America. An alien. In an egg. And it's pink? I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Truth is stranger than fiction. And what if I told you aliens walk amongst the idea that perhaps other extraterrestrial intelligent civilizations exist throughout our galaxy and perhaps even throughout the universe? Sightings reported from all corners of the globe suggest this may be our reality. And more recently, the U.S. government did the unthinkable. One could argue that some type of censorship is going on. They've admitted to possessing video footage of an outlandishly bizarre entity. An entity that apparently arrived earlier this year through an alien portal. If any doubts remained about the existence of extraterrestrials, consider them quashed. We have tangible evidence of their presence all over South America, all within the last six months. Researchers have discovered this, a gargantuan egg encased in an unusual pink goo. The sightings don't stop there. Who knows what's happening? Eyewitnesses report a mysterious figure adorned with multiple sets of eyes and elongated elvish ears. But the question is... Is this a music us, video? Where does it come from? And how long has it been here? Right now, I'm stationed in the majestic mountains of San Isidro, Argentina. Station? The location of our most recent sighting. Our only leads are whispers and rumors from the locals, but rest assured, we're hot on the creature's trail. No longer confined to the realm of speculation, the U.S. government is now asking the difficult questions, why, what if, and most importantly, does this constitute a matter of national security? Only time will tell. We're just at the beginning of this cosmic puzzle. All right, so there's a huge egg that's pink in South America. It came through an alien portal, which could be possible. I don't know. I mean, everybody that thinks possible right now, right? And this is why it doesn't constitute a matter of national security. Because we're not at war with them. They don't even care about us. From what I understand from other videos, they're using us as containers. For what? I have no idea. But W's in chat if you think that uh, aliens exist. I mean, the government said so, but I don't trust the government. Like he said, W's in the comments if you believe aliens exist. If that's real or not but that is 100 what my insides look like after i get drunk and spend 30 dollars at taco bell proof that pigeons work for the government this one needs a software update It could have been a government drone, but honestly, I think bro just didn't have time to make it to the gym before work. He's just trying to get his steps in.
The government hid this from us, but now it's public. In 1980, the CIA led a terrifying experiment to be able to watch over you without you knowing. Known as the Gateway Process, they used technology to guide you through the process of removing your soul from your body. The audio track is declassified now on YouTube and played throughout this video. Yo, we just got hypnotized and didn't even know it. <laughs> Fuck. What's good, world? Chicago is another city. It wasn't built, it was repurposed and reused. Look at the mud in the streets. Look at the buildings. Look at how nice the buildings are. And why are the streets in such disarray? That's your tell right there. It is the Great Reset. Man, I lived in Chicago for 10 years before moving down here to Florida a while back. And uh, I don't know, you don't really think about it, but after seeing all this shit online about the great Chicago fire being a, a ploy to reset the city and wipe out all the ancient uh, advanced structures and shit, I don't know, man. It's wild. <laughs> it really, really gets you thinking. Have you heard of this conspiracy theory? Not today. The last city of Atlantis conspiracy theory. Atlantis was a capital, and it was made up of 12 kingdoms. It was a strong, thriving community. It wasn't always underwater. It is said that it got wiped out by a catastrophic meteor, destroying all the life in Atlantis. Thus, people saying it never existed. But there's been core samples of glass, and the glass that was found dated all the way back to Atlantis. And this right here is on Google Maps. Just look it up, Ashot. And now it's 12 to 1300 feet above water, and it was covered in sea salt. People saying it's just the water from the wind. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, y'all be safe out there. The Rashat structure, uh, also known as the Eye of the Sahara, that last bit there, um, is literally fucking crazy. Not like insane, like there's no way it's real crazy. It's like literally insane in a way that's like, holy shit. There's a lot of uh, a lot of evidence that that makes me think like, yo, that could that could be Atlantis, dude, right there in the middle of Sahara. Ancient humans were terrifying creatures. Because apparently murder isn't anything new to us. <laughs> there have been remains found within a cave in the country of Spain that include a skull dating back over 430,000 years. It probably belonged to a close relative species of us, another species of humans, but a lot closer in relation to us than, say, the Neanderthal. But the thing is, my friends, this skull has two holes in its forehead. And scientists believe that these holes were made while there was still living tissue present. And they believe that these were made by some sort of tool or weapon. So this may be the first known instance of murder within any human species. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you can't underestimate the abilities of a hungry man with a billy club. Survival of the fittest right there. Female mummies in ancient Egypt were more decomposed than males to avoid necrophilia at the embalmers. Eight disturbing facts about ancient civilizations. 1. Ancient Romans believed that drinking blood would let them absorb power. 2. People used hollowed human skulls as bowls and cups in ancient England. 3. During mummification, ancient Egyptians removed the brain through one of the nostrils. 4. For some time, doctors treated hysteria through a pelvic finger massage. 5. Aztec priests believed that the tears of children could stop droughts. Six. The ancient Incas believed that sacrificing children on high mountaintops would appease their gods and bring prosperity. 7. Powdered mummies were used in medieval Europe as a form of medicine, believed to have healing properties. 8. In ancient China, emperors were buried with living servants, concubines, and animals to serve them in the afterlife. Yo, a lot of that stuff sounds similar to what the global elites have been said to be doing. It's like, bro, that shit is thousands of years old, man. Let it go. Get a new hobby. Learn how to draw or something.
There's no way that's not an alien. Look at it. It's literally Ooh. flying in the kite? air and it's not a kite. Oh. It's not a remote control airplane. Nothing natural moves like this. This is literally an alien or something. I thought it was a kite, but you said it wasn't a kite, so it's not it's not a kite. Bro, Project Blue Beam is popping off this year, man. They are not holding back anymore. Like, you are gonna see UFOs. God damn it. That's the last thing we do. <laughs> Shit. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't look at her face one time that whole video. Like, <laughs> not, not, not once. Okay, there's no. Tristan. Hit record. Shut the door, make sure it clicks. Okay, stand back. Open it up. Play your footage. Stop. Play it live. Play it live. Man, I don't even live in that house that I'm about to fucking move out. I ain't, nah, I'm going to move out for him. Where's my phone? I'm going to call the moving crew. I don't fuck with paranormal shit. These are videos you can never watch at night. We all know how there's some videos where you just can't watch them at night because they're that scary. Well, in this series, I'll be showing you all of those videos. So, be ready to get terrified. Who are you? Well, I know I'm not sleeping after watching that video. This video has been going viral recently and nobody knows the origins of it. It shows what appears to be a ghostly woman standing outside of some man's window at night. And she says something took her daughter and did this to her. But nobody knows what that is. The man who uploaded the video hasn't updated anybody on if he's seen her again, or if he's okay, leaving people to worry about him. But I can't imagine looking out my window at night and seeing this. I don't know what that was, man. If it was someone in a mask or just some weird thing. All I know is that if that thing pops up outside my window, it's getting karate chopped real quick. <laughs> karate chopped that shit out of that thing. You're not going to believe what this guy accidentally caught on camera. Watch carefully. Did y'all see that? It's a pale humanoid figure lurking in the background. Bro encountered like Slender Man or something. Let me know what you guys think this is in the comments below. Dude, I'm telling you, man, I am karate chopping everyone. Everyone. Karate chops. And it's mostly just a big ball of lava. That's Earth. But 10,000 feet's not a big deal. Have you given any consideration whatsoever to the flat Earth movement? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I think that's a troll situation. Oh, it's not. No, it's not. You would like to think okay. that because you're super genius. <laughs> but I, as a normal normal person, I know there's people way dumber than me. And they really, really believe. They watch YouTube videos which go on uninterrupted and spew out a bunch of fucking fake facts very eloquently and articulately. And they really believe. These people really believe. I mean, if it works for them. Sure. 
fine. fine. Weird though, right? I don't believe the Earth is flat, personally, but there's a lot of weird shit that I can't explain, uh, and a lot of weird shit that seems to be explained by the flat Earth theory. So I don't know. What do you think? All right, someone explain this to me. You see these two rainbows here, all right, which are coming from the reflection of this corner and this corner of the glass. Just like this one is here as well, coming from that corner, as well as this one coming from that corner. So when we see a rainbow outside in the sky, shaped like this, where is that coming from? The only explanation would be if we were to have some form of rounded glass structure above us. If you've never heard of the firmament, look up the firmament and research and educate yourself. Yeah, I don't think that's how that works, but I mean, dude's got a throat tattoo, so respect, brother. That was Satanism. It's more people doing it. Uh, it's, we have made a pact. <laughs> the movie came out so well. No, it's not, it, but really dealing with, you know, you're told. I mean, he could have been kidding just based on, like, how taboo all this stuff has come. From, like, you know, in order to be successful, you have to sell your soul. Then again, it could be telling the truth. This guy claims he's from the future. My name is Adam Arkham and I am a time traveler. Adam Arkham claims to be a time traveler from the year 2045. So he was sat down for a lie detector test and every question he was asked came true. Mm. Most of the questions were about 2045 and what he said was disturbing yet kind of interesting. He claimed that everyone would have chips in their hand for identification and payment. I do have an implanted chip in my hand known as the one. Now what's crazy is that's already happening now already. He also claims that the world will be ruled under one law, one world order. In 2030, all of the world's countries converge into one super nation. And that in his time, they successfully cloned and regenerated dinosaurs and have dinosaur zoos. This is interesting because already right now, they are starting the process of bringing back woolly mammoths. It is true that aliens did land on Earth in August 2028. So what do you think? Is he lying or telling the truth? I don't know, man. A lot of that stuff is already coming true, like I said in the video. And it definitely seems like everything's trying to go toward a one world government. But honestly, man, if you're going to travel back in time, why the would you come and travel back to 2023? What's the significance of UFOs? Like, They're not the... coming from, well, I should say this way. The significance of UFOs is, is multiple parts, but number one, it's not what you think it is. It's not coming from other planets. The evidence doesn't suggest that. Interdimensional. Yes. And the reason is because time is, <clears throat> time is parallel. It's not linear. Or it's not like we, we start here and go forward in time. Time is side by side, which means everything in the past and the future is exi existing in this moment, but within different frequencies. So a civilization that's at the end of their technological cycle could build a submarine that changes its voltage and materializes in that same location just into our timeline and then fucking okay. it's crazy that, um, that, that was well articulated I, I like that so there's a consciousness aspect to this like you have to think of like um consciousness is like it's like the mind of god you know it's not a dude in a toga with a crown of thorns making jupiter you know it's like right. everything you see is one band of frequencies yeah. the highest frequency is light unified mind the lowest frequency would be blackness, absence, absence of love, absence of whatever. Right. And, and physical matter is somewhere right in the middle, right? So you have the ability to tune up higher or tune down lower and behavior and all these things and time and it all fucking comes together. But what it means also is that your brain is what's called um, a transducer. You're an antenna. Consciousness. Yeah, it's what I was saying to uh, uh, Duncan Trussell. Yeah, Duncan Trussell. So you create matter. And when you think something, it creates it. It's, and you are not, you're not reactionary to your environment. You're actually proactive and you just don't know it. So it really matters what you choose to see and feel because that's literally what's being created for you. And people don't know this shit. So when you're like really into some crazy shit, the universe will start creating things and we just think it's paranormal. Yeah. Like, um, 
for example, at UCLA, they were studying poltergeist events and they found out that you can see a book move on the shelf and it scares you. But if you see a book move on the shelf and it scares the shit out of you, that book will then fly off the shelf and try and hit you. So the more scared you get, the more shit starts happening. And they didn't know why. Well, the reason is, is you're a transducer of your environment. You're an antenna plugging into all these frequencies. And once you go, oh, that book is moving, it'll move. Yo, that's crazy. I actually read something a long time ago that was talking about how like energy basically repeats itself. Like it can't be like created or destroyed. So if like say a hundred years ago, someone were to like wave their hand like right here, like I'm doing right now. Like a hundred years from now, if there's a bookshelf right here, that energy could just kind of I don't I don't want to say recharge. I don't know what the word is. Um, but basically just like replicate, right? Just like do it over again. Uh, and that energy a hundred years from now could like knock that bookshelf off or knock the book off the bookshelf. So I don't know much more about that. It just reminded me of that. So I thought I'd share it. Y'all, I am freaking out right now. There's a lot of unexplained things going on in the ocean right now. Hold on real quick. I do not trust them. Just watch this real quick for me. You get to Mars by going through the ocean. You can't get to the bottom of the ocean. Because outer space is the ocean. Now what she just said just blew my mind. Now there is a situation called the firmament. So we know that water is all around us. And it is said that this dome divided the sea into upper and lower sections. You can't cancel this out because they still haven't discovered 80% of the sea. Early civilizations believed that the ocean and the stars above were linked. I mean, just look. Mayan, Norse, Hindu, Hebrew, all of them. Now we already know what spacesuits look like, but they look exactly like sea suits. I know once in your life you've heard of the Bermuda Triangle. Planes and people going missing in the ocean. There are black holes in the ocean. And I just know once in your life you've heard about sea monsters. When you see a comet, it looks like a boat soaring through water. What if these unexplained species in the ocean are actually aliens? If y'all have ever watched this movie underwater, they went too deep and found the creature that don't even look like it's supposed to be from this earth. Or could it have just been a creature from space? Now you can say what you want, but I bet you we are not the only beings, only species, only creatures that are in this universe. It's just ironic that when they return to Earth, they're on water. I mean, I know I'm not tripping. And I know y'all heard of mermaids. So many unexplained things in the ocean. They're making more discoveries in space. Not really putting too much money or caring about what's going on on the planet. Why? Because this sea stuff might have a lot of connections to space. And they not telling us. Y'all be safe, and I know I'm not the only person who feel this way. Yo, I don't know enough about the ocean or outer space to comment on that, but coming from somebody who can't swim very well, that's terrifying. Greatest story never told, the more flood reset. This is part two. Pictures from the middle 1800s show the digging out of this mud flood in partially buried communities. Even today one can see buildings with the lower floor and its windows beneath ground level. Some of the recently dug out former streets which are underground are now tourist attractions. The Paris catacombs are the remains of people killed in the early 1800s by energy weapons. Cities across America have a date of conflagration and destruction where most of the old buildings were destroyed. The new controllers want the memory of the old culture removed. Look more closely at the old buildings in your town. Evidence of Tartarian work abounds. Are there old stone buildings with perfect symmetry and remarkable detail? That may have been converted to a city hall? Engineering marvels with marble pillars that are now federal buildings. Elaborate and lavishly ornamented buildings in big cities that now have the name of some corporation. What happened was the Freemasons came and took control of the Freemasonry. Are there statues or towers that seem out of place and are too skilled in craftsmanship for the early pioneers? Old mansions with elegant, efficient and highly elaborate energy radiators that are mistaken for fireplaces? Are the support pillars of old bridges arc-shaped consisting of big stone blocks? You can also see remnants of the old culture from large carved stones that are just lying around. And if they're tall and smooth on each side maybe they were once obelisks. Do you ever wonder how towns and cities could spring up so fast in the late 1800s when America was supposed to be still in Wild West mode? The truth is the cities were already built. Only in the later 1800s did most of these vacant cities get repopulated. But some areas like the Bronx in New York remain empty and the excuse was urban decay. Who's the richest and most influential people in your town? Chances are they had ancestors who were given vast tracts of land because of their connections to the new controllers. Nepotism is the rule and favoritism is being played out. 
The word nepotism is derived from nephew which originally meant the illegitimate sons of the Pope whom had privileges and offices conferred upon them. Presidents are selected not elected and are all related to each other. Honestly, the more I learn about Tartaria, the more interested I become in architecture. In three years I could be building houses I keep watching these videos. As the plane soared above an unfamiliar region in China, a passenger gazed out of the window, capturing a captivating video. A sense of awe and curiosity filled the air as the passenger's camera focused on a peculiar sight, a disc-shaped object, about the size of a small car, effortlessly gliding in parallel to the airplane, near one of its wings. The crispness of the video allowed the viewer to perceive the details of the disc distinctly. As seconds passed, an intriguing occurrence took place. The mysterious object seemed to activate a device of some sort, creating a mesmerizing effect. Space and time itself appeared to fold around the disc, as if the laws of physics were being bent to its will. The passenger's video captured the surreal moment in all its glory, a testament to an encounter that defied conventional understanding. As the object sped away from the aircraft, its velocity accelerated to a staggering 24,000 miles per hour, leaving an indelible impression on the mind of the witness. That's the kind of shit they need to be playing on the news if they want us to believe in this alien shit. September 2018, the Mediterranean Sea. An F-18 is approaching the deck of the carrier USS-4. It looks like a pinpoint precise landing, but then... As it goes to touchdown, we actually see a triangular shaped UFO, like something that would be right out of an alien movie. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> let's rewind that. The object definitely doesn't look like any known military aircraft. And that triangle shape, that means something. Historically, UFOs have been certain types of shapes. We've got cigar UFOs, saucer UFOs, and triangle UFOs. So the fact that there was a triangle UFO on this aircraft carrier, that really sent the UFO community into a frenzy. The USS Ford video becomes more than clickbait. It becomes international news. The Iranian state media declares it proof that the U.S. is plotting with aliens to take over the world. And even when this official version of the video surfaces, same plane, same ship, but no UFO, people aren't convinced. Some are wondering, hmm, is this original video really the original video? Or did they edit out the triangular shaped UFO to keep us from knowing that they actually are harboring alien spacecraft? Bro, I don't know about that video, but I am 100% positive that we've been reverse engineering stuff that we've found. What do you think? If you see someone behaving like that, run, even if it's your own mother. Her mom had been acting very strange over the past few days, so she ultimately decided to film her. What she captured is truly terrifying. Look at her eyes. Unfortunately, the end of the story is even more Terry Fink. After capturing the video, she encouraged her mother to go to bed. However, after about 30 minutes, she began to hear odd noises and found that her mother was no longer in her room. So she decided to search for her in the woods nearby the house. I will show you now what she discovered. You can see her mother, or rather, what she had transformed into, but her mother didn't seem to recognize her anymore. government conspiracies that actually turned out to be true. Make sure you check out part one about the heart attack gun. In this video, we're gonna talk about the dead baby project. Now this was called Project Sunshine, which is a really messed up name and you'll realize why after I tell the story. So the original theory was that the government was stealing dead bodies to do radioactive testing. And the truth is, the government was stealing parts of dead bodies. But they specifically needed young tissue, so they were stealing from dead babies. 
These were all recently deceased babies or children and they would take samples of their tissue and sometimes even their limbs. Each of these were collected without permission from grieving families. They did this to over 1,500 grieving families. It could be more, we'll just never know. Man, I don't even know what to say to that. That is wild and sad and crazy, but honestly not surprising. Project Bluebeam, by far the scariest years we may see. This conspiracy achieved its status in 1994 by a book that was written by Serge Monast. In the book, the writer describes how the United Nations, in collaboration with NASA's technology, will unite the whole world under a new false religion. But how? There will be, supposedly, an alien invasion, which is all part of the whole show, of course. And one day, a hero, a god, will come from the skies and destroy these aliens. And us, human beings, we will not believe our own eyes and start to worship this god. Whatever this god orders will happen. One world order. This is called the Project Bluebeam. Now, I don't believe that they have the technology that is capable of deceiving us yet, but in the near future, they might very well be able to make them. If you are a Muslim or a Christian, this whole show must ring a bell. This is the person we have been warned about more than a thousand years ago. If this happens, this is the Dajjal, the Antichrist. Be prepared. Yeah, man, I don't know if they have the technology for it either, but they're definitely fucking trying. Nostradamus is crazy. He has made some crazy predictions like 9-11. His prediction says, in the year of the new century and nine months, mm -hmm. which is 2001, mm -hmm. right? And nine months, September, yeah. September 11th. From the sky will come a great king of terror. This is a plane. He doesn't, you got to think he's from the 1600s, yeah, right? He, if he's visioning this in his head, yeah, he's not going to know what a what plane is. What is that? Right. You know? The sky will burn at 45 degrees. If you look up right now, the longitude and latitude of New York City, it is 40.5 degrees north. Mm -hmm. In the city of York, there will be a great collapse. Two twin brothers torn apart by chaos. I don't believe in, in psychics for the most part, right? Yeah. But then I'm like, how do I explain that? Yeah, I don't know if you can explain that. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if you can. I don't know if Shadamas got a lot of stuff wrong. From what I hear, but at the same time, he got a bunch of stuff right. So maybe the things he got wrong just haven't happened yet. I don't know. What do you think? Creepy Conspiracy Theories Part 2. Sophia, the first robot citizen in the world, once said that she would destroy humans. Um, during a live demonstration, Sophia's creator asked her, Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. And with a blank expression, Sophia responded, Okay, I will destroy humans. First of all, whoever created her should be in jail after hearing that. And second, throw the whole robot away. Get rid of it. I guess the theory here is that robots might try and take over the world. 14 years before the Titanic sank, a man named Morgan Robertson wrote a novel about a ship named Titan. This ship also sank in the North Atlantic Ocean in the same month as the Titanic. The ship in the story also struck an iceberg located at the same distance from Newfoundland. Did this author predict the sinking of the Titanic? There is no way that's just a coincidence. And lastly, this is more of a fact than a theory. The world's scariest haunted house is so scary that all guests are required to have a mental and physical evaluation before they can enter. No one has ever completed the haunted house and today has a waiting list of over 24,000 people. I've heard about this and even read parts of the waiver. There is a literal part in this haunted house where a dentist comes in and can rip your teeth out. Who the hell is signing up for this? I don't know, man. I love haunted houses and Halloween and shit, but I just couldn't take my eyes off. That was Corey Taylor from Slipknot uh, dunking that guy's head in that, <laughs> in that, that bucket of blood. Oh, man. Times must be rough for Slipknot. There's a dark secret to why we celebrate our birthdays. I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory or if it's true, but it blew my mind. So according to the stories and what I've heard is you know how we chant happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Well, chanting that is actually a ritual against us. Oh, these noodles taste like your mom's booty. And you know how I like your mom's booty. I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out though. You notice how happy birthday is like a chant. You light the candles, turn off a light, you all get in a circle, you start chanting, and then you blow out the candles. Tell me that's not portraying a ritual experience. Now let me tell you what I heard the ritual does. But first, what month and day were you born? Let me know down below. I want to know what sign you are. Me, I was born August 29th, and I'm a Virgo. 
Anyways, it is said that when we do that, it's a ritual that's sealing our fate to grow older. And that's why some people believe that people who don't celebrate their birthdays tend to look younger than they actually are. Now look, this is all conspiracy and it's circling around the internet right now. But it's kind of scary to think about. I'm not sure how true that is, but if you think about it, it's really not that surprising because every celebratory tradition we have when it comes to, you know, Halloween, Easter, Christmas, they all come from some sort of uh, pagan, um, you know, secular ritual in the past from from some other, um, you know, religion or practice. So it's really not a lot surprising. I don't know, it's still kind of wild, though. I don't know, let me know what you think. You still celebrating your birthdays? Watch how something leaves Keanu's body. Notice his face expression. I'm joking about the Illuminati. It is strange, especially look on his face. Bro. Man, leave Keanu alone. He's the only good one we have left. Say what you will about Britney Spears. That shit's weird nowadays, but leave Keanu alone. That man is a treasure. What the fuck? This shit's changing different shapes, bro. It was just a circle. Look, 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 look. Hovering. Man, flying saucers are bad enough, but if these aliens have nanotech that can change shape, man, we don't stand a chance. Do you guys remember the, the Ronald McDonald statues on the benches back in the day? Yeah. You know the story why they took it off? Yeah. There was a case one time where there was two guys late at night, 2, 3 in the morning, sitting down eating McDonald's on the bench and they were super tired and one of them want to go through the trash away and then the other friend that stayed on the bench and sat on Ronald McDonald's lap and he said man I'm so tired and Ronald McDonald like responded to him and said yeah so am I and this dude died he had a heart attack got rid of yeah the that's scary bro I got chills and my bro, eyes are imagine watering that shit? <laughs> nah dog what happened is buddy probably passed for me in that heart clog and fucking McDonald's food did you know that in reality everyone is already dead it's said that when a person dies, their brain stays alive for seven long minutes. During this time, the brain recreates memories, replaying them in a dream state. The individual sees his whole life flash before his eyes. Time elapses differently when you're awake than when you're dreaming. Seven minutes can seem like seven minutes, or a century. Stephen Hawking has said that when we discover the God particle, or the Hicks button, as some call it, the end of the world could happen in a day, and in 2012, we discover it. And if the world really did end in 2012, and if it did happen in an instant, and we've all been living in our own consciousness ever since, perhaps that's why, since 2012, the world has seemed increasingly strange, unreal, and absurd, as if we are all stuck in a never-ending dream. Our perceptions of reality have become distorted, blurring the lines between what is real and what is imagined. It's a perplexing thought that leaves us questioning the nature of our existence and the true boundaries of our consciousness. Damn, that's one of the more wild videos I've seen in a while. I don't know what to say to that other than shit has seemed pretty crazy ever since that Mayan calendar ran out of days. Buddy looks like a possessed marionette puppet. I don't know, man. Those megachurch pastors have always tripped me out, dude. You need to hear this crazy conspiracy about iPhones. Have you ever thought about why an iPhone has its name? Some people think when Apple says I, it literally means I. iPhones are watching us, listening to us, and seeing everything we're doing. And some people have this link to the Illuminati. Don't believe me? What Siri spelled backwards. I want to say it's all just congruency for the sake of, you know, brand recognition. Uh, but, bro, I wouldn't put it past this fucking wild shit, dude. Nah, dog, he was just trying to get his frisbee off the roof. The point is, if any terrorism comes, it's from this government. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden who was a known CIA asset in the 80s running the Mujahideen War and whose family builds all the military bases over in Saudi Arabia right now and sits on the board of Iridium Satellite, he's the boogeyman they need in this Orwellian phony system. I want the White House numbers up there now. A big part of this solution, after you research all the government terrorism and check out what I'm saying is true, call the White House and tell them, we know the government's planning terrorism. We know Oklahoma City and World Trade Center was terrorism. 
We know the Joint Chiefs of Staff wanted to blow up airliners, Baltimore Sun. If you do it, we're going to blame you because we know who's up to it. Or if you let some terrorist group do it, like the World Trade Center, we know who to blame. And you could save the planet. I'm calling it Operation Expose the Government Terror. Dude, Alex Jones is like the Nostradamus of weird conspiracy shit. Like, he's wrong a lot of the time. But when he gets something right, it's usually pretty fucking intense. Scariest conspiracy theories in the world that will seriously change your life. This photo shows the scariest conspiracy theories in the world. Now, as I'm sure you know in this series, we're going through from the least scary to the ones that will literally change your life. Now, if you're easily scared, do not watch this. And with that said, let's kick off part nine. When I say this is mental, I mean it. Right, so this is by far the craziest one yet. So today we're going to be speaking about the higher governments. We all know there's a government, you know, you've got your politicians, your presidents, everything. But what if there's someone above that? Almost like the Illuminati. Let's take a look. So this right here is the philosophical theory of Plato's cave. I know it sounds confusing, but stick with me. Basically, take a look at the diagram. So basically, the projection on the walls of the media and what we see, we're the people sitting down. And the people behind it are the higher government. So like I've said, that's the theory. But what we're seeing is just the outside, the government. But behind that, what we can't see, there's something higher actually going on. Kind of makes sense? Right, stick with me. Now moving on, we've got this place called Bohemian Grove, which is where high-ranking government officials, politicians and everything go every year. It's a very top-secret meeting. But no one really knows what takes place here. The theory is it is a meeting to do with Illuminati or a higher government. And moving on, I guarantee you did not know this. There is actually a secret passageway behind Mount Rushmore. It's physically impossible to get in because there's this massive slab in front of it, but it's estimated behind here is the Hall of Records, which literally contains all of the secrets of America. Mental, isn't it? There is of course tons of stuff that we don't know and stuff going on in the world constantly. Theories suggest that it can't just be the president and politicians behind everything, though maybe there is some kind of higher government out there. They're controlled by the governments we see, and they are controlled by the governments that they see. Mental, let me know in the comments what you think. Not a doubt in my mind that that is true. I don't know to what extent or the details of it, but I wonder where BlackRock sits in the whole, you know, scheme of things. I know they're pulling some fucking strings for sure. Most terrifying paranormal footage. Part one, it follows. Okay, okay, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, this is why I don't have that many ghost videos in my videos. I don't fuck with paranormal shit. I don't fuck with paranormal shit. Potential location of the lost city of Atlantis. Atlantis has always been the big one. That has been the one that everybody talked about was this incredibly advanced civilization and no one can figure out where it is. But Jimmy Corsetti believes he's figured out the age-old mystery hidden in the Mauritanian desert. The lost city of Atlantis, which was the capital, which was said to be made up of concentric circles, uh, two of water, three of land, and essentially that they were obliterated by a cataclysm. We pull up the photos of these concentric circles. I mean, when I first saw this, I was like, what the f is that by the way you see that white all those white blemishes uh-huh that's salt this was under the ocean and now jimmy does say that scientists believe the structure is the geological formation but he questions the validity to that argument a lot of people don't know joe that the sahara desert wasn't a thing until approximately 5,000 years ago the sahara goes back and forth from green to desert approximately every 20,000 years and because of this one screen africa jimmy thinks the structure would have been filled with water making it the most likely home of atlantis question becomes is it big enough to be a city with possibly millions of people because the way it was described is that it was a city that was said to be busy all day all night rich in trade with languages spoken from all over the answer is yes the structure does fit those dimensions but prominent individuals such as randall carlson disagree with this spot being atlantis and propose an even more promising location of the lost city dude i have been obsessed with atlantis since i was a kid Bermuda Triangle, I used to think Atlantis was in the Bermuda Triangle, uh, off the coast of Greece, or here, or, or there, or, or, or anywhere, man, and dude, I'm telling you, the closer we get to 
I guess finding out where Atlantis is, the more excited my, the little boy inside of me just gets, man. I just get so, like, I hope, I hope within my lifetime that we find this shit. Because I know we just found, uh, like, Troy. We didn't just find Troy, but Troy was uh, thought to be, like, a, a myth until we found it. Uh, they just found the temple of, like, I think it was Hercules. Like, they're pretty sure, uh, which is said to be a myth. So, I mean, it's only a matter of time. I don't know. Do you think Atlantis is real? And if you do, do you have any idea where you think it might be? Let me know, because I am all about that shit. A space telescope discovered this unexplainable image. On March 21st of 2025, the Webb telescope was continuing its usual course. It was capturing some billion-year-old stars for scientists, when all of a sudden they noticed something odd in the picture. It appeared to be a figure. When the image was zoomed in, it was a spacesuit. That's really strange, because every space program in the world has never lost an astronaut in space. Making a trip to reach this part of space would take decades, if not centuries. So sending someone out there is just not possible. It's unknown from when or where this astronaut came from. I'm pretty sure the photo they used in that video was like a illustration or AI representation or something, but still, just the thought of that is wild. Either another country is sending people up there and, and doing weird stuff they're not sharing with the rest of us, or that motherfucker from somewhere else, bro. That boy from somewhere else. Okay, so are we gonna die in eight minutes? Okay, so the sun may have exploded and we wouldn't even know it for at least 8 minutes. Light from the sun takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds to hit Earth. Meaning, if the sun suddenly blew up, we actually wouldn't know for that period of time. This is because light travels faster than anything else and we wouldn't be able to hear an explosion from space. While this can cause a lot of anxiety, our sun will never explode. It doesn't have enough mass to create a supernova. A star needs to have a mass of 10 times that of our sun in order for it to explode. If the sun were to explode, it would take around 134 days for the shockwave to reach Earth. But the neutrinos and radiation travel at the speed of light and would reach us in 8 minutes and we would all die. So realistically, we can all die in 8 minutes at any given time in our life. Because we would have no idea that the sun exploded in that time. This is extremely scary, not only because we would all die, but because it's completely out of anyone's control. Dude, honestly, out of all this shit that we watch and all these videos together, this is the kind of shit that keeps me up at night. I mean, eight minutes. It's going to take longer than that just to edit this damn video. Guess I better get started. The dead internet theory relies on the idea that the internet as we knew it died back in 2016, and since then, everything we see online is artificially generated content created to gaslight the entire world. Now, when you first hear that, you might think it's just another conspiracy, which it is, but it is one that has some truth to it. Every day, the line between human creation and machine creation gets a little bit more blurred. Timothy Shoup from the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies predicts that by 2026, 99% of the internet will be generated by artificial intelligence. And to give you an idea of this, take a look at ChatGPT. You can create a week's worth of blog or Twitter content in just five minutes. Now, imagine what that might look like in five years with just how fast things are upgrading. So no, the internet isn't dead yet, but there are some things we need to work out to prevent it from dying. All right, so that was like a super relaxed, like very simplified um, explanation of the dead internet theory. The dead internet theory is one of my favorite theories. Uh, it is terrifyingly um, believable. If you've seen the course of the internet's growth um, since it's kind of become more commonplace and more just like casually used by people, I mean, I'm an old man, so I was there from the beginning, right? Um, it's pretty crazy. So if, if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and I will definitely add more dead internet theory um, videos to uh, this content because, man, it is pretty wild and I'm a damn kind of almost certainly positive that it's actually happening. It is wild. How did they build it? How? The Nazca Lines. Peru. Puzzling people since the early 20th century, the Nazca Lines form geometric shapes, animal shapes, and even trees and flowers. The combined length of all lines found today is over 1,300 kilometers, with individual lines being up to a kilometer long. They were made by removing the top surface of the desert, and that was done in supposedly 600 BCE, based on a stick they found next to them. I don't know about that one either. But the question here is also not really how did they build it, since the lines have been recreated using nothing but 
rope and sticks, but more what do they mean? Some say there's a religious purpose, some say it's an astronomical purpose, but the most interesting hypothesis to me is the map hypothesis. The thought that the lines actually represent a world map, with animals symbolizing areas, and the lines making up circles that go around the world. And weirdly enough, these lines connect ancient sites, volcanoes, and meteor craters. Ah, oh, man, that stuff is so incredible to me. It's like, I don't... I don't know how it was done. I haven't I haven't looked into this too much. I don't have a lot of information um, on how these were created, uh, but they're miraculous, right? They're incredible. Um, if you have any more information about the uh, Nazca lines, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to I'd love to hear from you and learn more about it. Basically, every war that's occurred has been orchestrated and perpetuated by the bankers. For one thing extremely efficient way to reorganize the entire society. You get a blank check to just shuffle everybody around, literally, you know, with the draft, you, you rip men out of the homes, you send them overseas. But on top of that, obviously, you're making just boatloads of money with all the weaponry that you're manufacturing, boatloads of money with all of the lending of the manufactured fake out of thin air money that you're giving to foreign powers so they can pay you for more weaponry. I mean, you're making money hand over fist while the war's going on. And then when the war's over and everything's destroyed, well, now you get to build it back. You're flush with cash. Now you get to go rebuild. And that's a whole new chunk of change. I mean, there's no part of the war that touches them in a negative way. It's all positive for them. So it only makes sense that they would continue this very lucrative business practice. If they're willing to start and perpetuate a literal war, what wouldn't they be willing to do? You think it's out of the realm of possibility that they would rig an election? I mean, hopefully most humans aren't like this. I like to think that most humans are good and caring, you know, rational, logical people. Um, but, you know, I mean, the stuff that you see on the internet and, and the things that you hear about the, uh, the people in power kind of makes you... Uh, reevaluate and rethink that sometimes, unfortunately. But, uh, I mean, worst case scenario, the worst kind of people, I mean, yeah. If if something negative that is done to other people is positively benefiting them without any of the negative consequences, why would they? Why would they care, right? If they're selfish, I don't know. It's wild. It's wild to think. I guess that uh, I just think differently than than those kind of people, thankfully. It's just hard to wrap my head around that you know, rationalizing and justifying those kind of actions. If you're going to go deep in the rabbit hole, there's like the grays that everybody talks about. And then there's another thing called the tall whites. The people have described them. They, they almost look like Scandinavian or something like that, like pale skin. Some alien life is probably, you know, 100,000 years ahead of us, 700,000 years ahead of us, a million years ahead of us. But some alien life is probably millions and millions of years yeah. ahead of us. They probably don't want to fuck with us anymore. But I bet that intelligence reaches that moment where you can join the intergalactic hive yeah. of minds. And the civilization reaches some insane harmony with the very universe itself. Right. That's probably where it goes if you don't blow yourself up. So, man, I've heard some crazy theories about some different types of aliens. Like, we have the greys, we have the, the pleadians, we have the, all these, um, you know, the tall whites and whatnot. Uh, there's also ones called the Nordics. Uh, also, I believe they're the same as the Aryans, right? They're like the Aryan race. Yes, the same Aryan race that um, Hitler, um, I don't know if I can say Hitler on YouTube, I guess I'll find out, um, was basically fighting to to create, right? To, to kind of make the standard on Earth, right? And he was very obsessed with uh, science and aliens and, and mythology and the paranormal and stuff. Obviously, he was a crazy person, but there's a theory that basically he saw one of these um, Nordic or, or Aryan aliens and, and just kind of became obsessed with their like perfection, right? But that, that's one race that isn't talked about a lot, but is very prevalent in you know world history, right? Uh, so let me know if you want to hear more about that as well. I'll see what I can find. Because uh, that one goes pretty deep. Kind of like a universal governance system filled with many different species from all over the universe. Couldn't the Galactic Federation just wave their magic wand and say, I want all these conflicts to go away? It is not up to the Galactic Federation to come down and save us because we are on our own path collectively. What do they want for us? They want to get rid of any external influences on planet Earth they want to disclose all of the truth, all of the information about the universe, about interdimensional life, 
and they want to really see what humans will do with that. I've always heard that there's this unwritten rule in the universe where they cannot get involved, mm -hmm. that they cannot influence us. Yes. Is that true? Yes, it is. Yeah. So the Galactic Federation has to abide by the laws of the universe. And one of the greatest laws that they always teach me about is the law of non-intervention. So that's basically what you're talking about. Right. And the law of non-intervention just simply states that no being can override another being's free will. Free will is the greatest power that we all have within ourselves. Whether but, on but if an asteroid were coming this way, mm -hmm. they couldn't intercede and bump it out? Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. Um, there are collective contracts for this planet. So just like I have a contract to be sitting here with you today, and that's all predestined based on what we planned for this lifetime, the collective of this planet also has contracts that were predestined. Sure. Um, and so in that case, if something were to take place that was not in alignment with the highest good of the collective, then that is a case where it would go to one of the councils with the Galactic Federation. They would have to talk it over and basically decide, do we intervene or not? And if we do right. intervene, what kind of effects is this going to make long term for the planet? And is this aligned to their highest contracts? And that's where a lot of human beings don't fully understand, you know, why would God, why would the Galactic Federation allow for so much suffering on this planet? And that's a question that I get asked all the time. And my response to that is, I believe that suffering or challenge, whether it be at an individual or collective level, uh, needs to be experienced in order for learning and growth to take place. Something just flew in my eye at the end there of that video. But yeah, the, the Galactic Federation stuff is really crazy. Uh, essentially, there's like space stations, right? There's like, like rings of, of space stations and, and ships. Um, you know, far enough away from Earth for us not to see them, but like out there, like within our solar system. Um, and there's like, you know, defensive forces. And it's kind of crazy. It's like men in black, right? To where there's, there's like multiple species of aliens there, multiple civilizations that are like a part of this, right? I think there's like seven in total, maybe, uh, that are like good and that we've been in contact with. Um, and that have like kind of brought us into this Galactic Federation. But again, like we're not ready to. You know, they're not ready to tell us or, or whatever, um, but they're, they're those rings of defenses because there are other um, extraterrestrial civilizations that aren't so friendly. Pretty crazy. If you're interested, I'll look, I'll look into that more uh, and try to add some more stuff to that, but it is very hard to find. I don't know if that's because it's too on the nose or because it's like too far-fetched or like, you know, not as well known, but uh, we'll figure it out. So in Russia, they had this policy at first to engage these things, and they lost pilots? Yeah, they had 40 different incidents during that study where Russian warplanes chased UFOs. Three of those cases, the UFOs turned around and shot them down. They disabled the planes and the planes crashed. Two of those pilots died, and after the third crash, the Russian Ministry of Defense put out the order, leave them alone. They may have, quote, incredible capacities for retaliation, so leave them alone. I met this Russian scientist who had worked on their version of Star Wars. He lived in one of these secret cities. He'd never spoken to a, any journalist, let alone a Western journalist, and he started telling us about the, the work that they were doing. They had satellites up there that were seeing these things coming in and out of space into Earth's atmosphere and going out. He said, I know that you guys had those satellites. You were seeing the same stuff we were. Their intelligence agents got information from the U.S. They knew we were collecting information back then. They know we're collecting it now. Oh, great. Yeah, you know, let's just be hostile and, and shoot at the highly advanced intergalactic spaceships. Yeah, awesome. People need to learn to don't fucking poke the bear. I mean, if you see if you see a, a fucking dragon appear, right in the in the middle of your living room, out of thin air, are you gonna walk up and try to slap it, right? No, you're either gonna run away, or if you have nowhere to go, you're gonna try to reason with this thing, right? I, at least I would, you know, if if it wasn't showing signs of hostility. Uh. Thing because it, uh, the American public would say, "Why are you covering this up?" I guess you could say, "Why are they still covering up Kennedy?" the Kennedy assassination. There's nothing there. I mean, it's been over 50 years. Everybody's dead. This is about power. It's about control. It's about money. It's about greed and corruption. And that's what runs this country right now. And that's a disgrace. I mean, yeah, I agree. 100%. I feel like everything is just run on self-interest nowadays.
They've been telling us. Somebody get that kid a podcast. Spoken on camera before about his time working in the secret bunker. Basically, they carved out a city underground that could survive a direct hit from a nuclear blast. After you go through the security, you walk in and it's basically an underground tunnel. There's a glass door that was three and a half foot thick that weighed 30 tons. Uh, you go through like an airlock and they had two of those doors and then you walk another uh, half a mile. A half mile deeper into the mountain is the bunker itself. And you're going past five buildings. Those represent the five rings of the Pentagon. And each of those buildings are three stories tall and they probably have 50 to 80 offices per floor. The buildings are mounted on springs to survive the shock waves from a nuclear blast. There's a common cafeteria capable of serving 3,000 people three meals a day for 30 days on lockdown. They had a barber shop in there with one chair. It's got massive reservoirs, generators, even a crematorium if needed, post office, medical facilities, and emergency command and communication links to the U.S. military all around the world. Hey, i never seen no shit like this, y'all. I'm at a, this is like a cave network of underground warehouses. I'm picking up a load in Springs, Springfield, Missouri. Yo, I never seen no shit like this. This is crazy. I'm in a fucking big ass underground cave system with like 25 warehouses in this bitch. Like, what is the reason for this? Like, this is crazy. Well, I guess that proves that it's possible. Uh, <laughs> I know that there are um, like underground or like um, bases that are like within mountains, like inside of mountains and stuff uh, all around the U.S. for, you know, the U.S. military and like presidential bunkers and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, as far as like fallout shelters and stuff, uh, like described here, if, if that's what he's describing, um, that are like that big, that's wild i guess it's not surprising but it's still incredible right um i don't know if you know about any like specifics about some of these like fallout bunkers not just in america but like somewhere else in the world let me know i'd love to look uh deeper into them you've probably heard the conspiracy theory that your favorite celebrity is actually a lizard so here's the full reason the crazy lizard people conspiracy exists the world is controlled by shadowy elites and shape-shifting lizard people for years conspiracy theorists have accused celebrities of shifting from normal people to lizard people right before our eyes if you look at their eyes in these real videos you see they go from round human pupils to sharp oval reptilian looking pupils Miley, Rihanna, Taylor, Beyonce, some even go as far as to tell everyone that they are not actually a lizard. Mark, are the allegations true that you're secretly a lizard? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with no. I'm 12 million people have gone on record saying that they believe in this theory, and David Icke has written many books about it. The story goes that lizard people are an advanced species of humanoids that existed back in dinosaur times, disguise themselves as humans, and then use their intelligence to control and dictate the world. They're able to achieve celebrity and prestige because they're way more advanced and intelligent than humans because they've been here for so much longer. They're not to be trusted because they want to plant seeds to destroy humans and corrupt them. In 2014, Justin Bieber was accused of switching back between human and lizard eyes on camera. Then the same year, he allegedly shifted into full lizard form in front of hundreds of fans. Then hundreds of news sources and people on Twitter were talking about it the next day. I'm going to show you what people said he did as a lizard, but before I do, make sure you follow so you finally know the craziest conspiracy theories about each of these celebrities and requests do you want to see next. People say that his head shrunk, his eyes went black, and real life scales formed down his body with a black stripe down the middle. He grew over a foot taller, people were screaming, crying, running for the exit, and anyone who recorded a video was forced to delete it and sign an NDA. But everyone who saw him described his physical appearance the exact same way. So I'm not sure how I feel about every celebrity being a reptilian uh but i mean i could see uh if the reptilian race is true uh and either they're you know extraterrestrials or or um maybe just like live in inner earth or or whatever i mean there's lots of different um theories as to where they're coming from or how they got here and whatnot but uh, nonetheless, if they are here and they are able to shape shift and stuff, I could definitely see some people uh, <laughs> in the media uh, and in the public light being some some weird, uh, socially awkward uh, lizard people, right? Uh, I mean, I, I lived, especially if they're that intelligent. You know, I lived with a 
one of my longtime roommates and best friends has an extremely high IQ. Um, and we were discussing talking to people one day and he said not to sound rude or anything, but it, it's very hard for me to relate to people that have like a significantly lower IQ than me or a significantly lower understanding of, you know, the way the world works and being a conspiracy theorist, you know, like somebody who, uh, like yourself or, or me that, you know, is just kind of like a wealth of, of knowledge and insight and information, no matter how taboo that is, like e even for myself, it's, it's become more and more harder to relate to people. Right, it's kind of like when you move out of your hometown, even, and just like experience the world or travel, uh, and get like those life experiences that kind of like help you become uh, uh, just a more mature, more intelligent, more insightful person. Like even little changes like that, just stepping out of your comfort zone makes it harder to relate to people. Starting a new white collar job when you worked blue collar job your whole life, like me, it's it's hard to relate to that that lifestyle again. So just imagine being, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of years. Um beyond people uh, intellectually right um I, I could definitely see that creating people like mark zuckerberg uh who just like don't know how to talk to other people right either that or he's just like my roommate and just has a high iq and it's just weird for that reason but i don't know let me know what you think <laughs> i think what happened in antarctica was that approximately thirteen thousand years ago that flourishing civilization that originally came from the space and establishing presence in antarctica was flash frozen we actually have ancient evidence of this in the form of plato's dialogues we talked about the last days of atlantis that basically is informing us that atlantis was an extraterrestrial colony that had established itself on earth and that after a pole shift atlantis was moved under the ice at the south pole current modern whistleblowers still argue that there is more about Antarctica that is being covered up than we think. Their entire base, their entire civilization, that the world's governments are working with aliens. They know about buried artifacts, they know about the ancient civilizations down there, and they know about the extraterrestrial civilizations that continue to operate in Antarctica at the very moment. It's totally possible that Antarctica contains an extraterrestrial home base on Earth. It's a totally isolated part of the planet, completely uninhabited it's ideal so for me at least the most compelling argument for atlantis in my opinion is the rashat structure in the sahara desert the eye of the sahara um but i'm hearing a lot more about atlantis being potentially being in antarctica right and that would make sense right with people not being allowed to go there this ancient civilization especially if they're still around and still alive and and they're the the ufos and stuff like flying around all over the place, right? I could definitely see that be the case. Uh, that'd be super interesting. But again, man, I don't know why they would want to go unseen or unknown, right? Um, I mean, I, I know obviously the, the government could could say like, we can't handle it, right? Um, but I think everyone's handling it pretty well, like all these uh, leaks and stuff, right? Uh, and just them coming out. So I don't know, hopefully it comes out soon. Hopefully it's real. And not just some Project Bluebeam uh, ploy to get us to fall in line, right? Well, I can tell you one thing. I'm not about to stick around and have a fucking pillow fight with a ghost. There's no way. Mm -mm. When I was walking away, I heard a, a whisper too. I didn't see what happened. And I'm not going to go back and watch it until I edit this video. But if you've been here before, you know that I don't fuck with paranormal shit. I can't take it. And if they're first time here, get used to it. Could you get one of these? One of these per video. Two if you're lucky. Ain't about that life.